Uh, yeah. Uh, family, y'all. Just keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, here we go. Uh. So the question arises then, how is the Gospel of John similar to the synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke? How is John similar to the other three? And how is John different from the other three? Are we ready to jump into that question? Should we start with, first of all, with how they're similar? How is John similar to Matthew, Mark, and Luke? In John, Jesus begins his ministry by being baptized by John the Baptist. So how interesting that all the synoptic Gospels, all three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John as well, have Jesus beginning his ministry by being baptized by John the Baptist. That's the beginning. And the story ends with Jesus dying and rising again. That's what all four of these have in common. So far, so good? So we have, we have at least one thing that all of these stories have in common. They all begin with Jesus being baptized. They all end with Jesus being killed and rising again. John shares a sequence of events with Mark. So how interesting, if we were to open up the Gospel of Mark, and then open up another Bible with the Gospel of John, and start looking at those chapters side by side, John chapter 6 and Mark chapters 6 and 8, we would see, whoa, how it is that they have the same sequence of events? <coughs> what does that mean if they both have the same sequence of events? One probably copied from the other. Do we think that John copied from Mark, or that Mark copied from John? Which was written first? Mark. So who copied from who? John. John was probably the copycat there. <laughs> John also shares certain details with Mark. So if John and Mark share various details, then who copied from whom? John probably copied from Mark. What are some of the things that John may have copied from Mark? They both use the same phrase with respect to genuine nard of great value. What is nard? Nard is perfumed oil. So we have the story of a woman coming and anointing Jesus' feet, or in the Gospel of Matthew, his head. Okay? How it is that in Mark and John, then, this, this was genuine nard of great value. That same phrase. Did John just make up that same phrase? Or did John copy that somewhere? It's almost like being a teacher in a classroom, right? You get papers from two different students, and you're looking at these papers and saying, boy, these papers are just too similar. Right? Someone copied off whom? Can I tell by looking at these who copied off whom? Well, they're using the same expression. Uh, other examples... When they're talking about 300 days wages, how much was that nard worth? I bet that nard was worth 300 days. I bet you had to work for 300 days to buy that. Mark and John both have that story. Who copied from whom? In another story, they both talk about 200 days wages. So it's just how it is that there are various features between John and Mark, which lead us to believe that whoever wrote John must have had some access to the stories of Mark. John shares various char characters with Luke. So there are certain people in Luke's gospel that we see again in John. Luke talks, for instance, about Mary and Martha. In Luke, Mary and Martha, Mary is the one who comes to Jesus and says, no, no, excuse me, Martha comes to Jesus and says, tell my lazy sister to help me out in the kitchen. Do you remember that story? Martha's cooking in the kitchen. Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet listening to his stories. And Martha's getting upset. She's boiling in the kitchen of how it is that she has to do all the work when Mary gets to, to sit at Jesus' feet and listen to his story. He says, Master, tell my sister to come and help me here in the kitchen. Luke talks about Martha and Mary. Do Matthew and Mark talk about Mar uh, Martha and Mary? Matthew and Mark don't talk about them at all. We see them for the first time in Luke. What happens in John? We see another story about Martha and Mary. Okay, so if there's a story about Martha and Mary, John didn't get that from Matthew. John didn't get that from Luke, from Mark. Where'd John get that from? Probably from Luke or another tradition that Luke used. Another example is Annas. How it is that we can see various characters that are only in Luke and only in John. So if you have a computer and you want to pull out, you know, BibleGateway.com or whatever, whatever you use, how it is that if you type in the word Annas, you'll see it in the Gospel of Luke. You'll see it in the Gospel of John. No other Gospels. Martha, you'll find it in the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of John. No other Gospels. 
John shares various features with Luke. So that, for instance, Luke talks about the lack of a night trial by Cephas. Luke talks about no trial. Matthew and Mark talk about night trials. Luke doesn't. Which does John? Does John say yes or no? John follows Luke. Uh, let's see, the, the three statements in Pilate's trial of Jesus not being guilty, the post-resurrection appearances in Jerusalem, simply meaning after Jesus rises from the dead, where does Jesus appear? In Matthew, Jesus appears in Galilee in the north. In Luke, where does Jesus appear? In Jerusalem in the south. Okay? What is John going to say? <coughs> does John say Jesus appeared in the north or in the south? John copies Luke. Do we see how it is? We have different stories. See that? Do you, do you, do you appear in the north? Do you appear in the south? Do you appear in the middle? Where, where do you appear? They're different stories. So who's copying whose stories here? John shares few similarities with Matthew, with maybe two, there are maybe two similarities that we can see between Matthew and John. Outside of those two similarities, there's not a lot in common between Matthew and John, let's just be honest. It's like John read Mark or knew those stories, John knew the stories of Luke, John and Matthew don't have a lot in common. No stories of Magi and a star in the Gospel of John. 